Hey guys, in the next couple videos, we're going to talk about groundwater, surface water, and watersheds. Specifically, in this video, we're going to talk about groundwater. Okay, so groundwater is simply defined as the water that is beneath okay, the surface of the ground. Okay, water that has seeped down into the soil. So it rains. Uh, after it rains, a lot of that water evaporates, but the probably a good portion, if not the majority of the water, actually seeps down into the ground and is, is absorbed by the soil. And then plants can use their roots to take that water in from the soil. We can get that water from the soil. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But groundwater is that water that's down in the ground. Okay, so we have the water that has uh, seeped down into the ground. Okay, we call this uh, percolates. Okay, percolates simply means to trickle downwards. Okay, so we have precipitation, rainfall, okay, snow, whatever. That water hits the ground, percolates, seeps down into the ground. Okay, now when the water goes down into the ground, it eventually gets to an area where the ground is saturated. Okay. Um, that is where the, the, all the tiny spaces between soil particles or between rocks is full of water. Okay? It's saturated. It's like taking a sponge and you, you take that sponge and you completely fill that sponge up with um, completely fill that sponge up with water and it won't hold any more water. It's completely full. That's saturated. So when the ground becomes saturated with water, okay, we call that area the water table. Okay? Um, the water table, the amount of water in the water table is dependent upon um, how dry or wet it is. If it's a real dry time during the summer, that means that water table goes down. There's less saturated area in the soil. That means the ground is, the water is deeper. Gravity is pulling that water down and it's deeper. And then when it's been raining a whole lot, then that means there's more water in the ground so the water table is higher. So let's take a look at that. Take more of a look at the water table. Okay, so here's an illustration uh, looking at the water table. So in this illustration, okay, you have two sections. You have this section up here, okay, which is fairly dry, and you have this section down here which is wet, which is saturated. <clears throat> now if I look at the two uh, pictures, I can see that in this top section there is a lot of air and a lot of uh, space between the soil particles that does not have water. Okay, so this is the dry section. This is the dry section of soil. Okay, this bottom section down here, you can see that the water, uh, the, the, the area between the particles of soil is completely saturated. It's completely full of water. Okay, and that is our zone of saturation. Now, the line between the zone of saturation, okay, and then the dry zone up here is called the water table. Okay, it's called the water table. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the water table. Okay, whenever the water table rises, there's a significant amount of rain. It's been raining a whole lot. All that water is running down to the ground. Okay, the ground actually becomes more and more full of water. Okay, so you have that water table that begins to rise. So as we have rain that is coming down and starts to fill up this area, okay, this dry area, the water table actually moves upwards. Okay, because it's basically like you know anything else, a bowl filling up with water. Okay, a bowl can only hold so much water. Ground can only hold so much water. The spaces, okay, between the particles of rocks and soil become full. Okay and that water table moves upwards. And when that water table moves upwards, we start to have a problem with flooding, okay? We have flooding. So essentially, uh, the ground becomes completely saturated, which means all of the ground is full of water. The, the ground is like the sponge. It can't hold any more water. It's soaked up all the water it can, okay? And when the ground is soaked up all the water it can, the water has no place to go. It can't go down into the ground and be absorbed. Therefore, the ground becomes full. The water essentially has to just run off the surface. It has to go someplace else. Okay, so no more water can be absorbed. The excess water runs off and we have overflow. Okay, so the streams, the creeks, the rivers, the lakes, 
Okay, none of that water can go into the ground. They fill up, they get too full. The bowl, essentially, as we were talking about, overflows. And that's where we have flooding. Okay, so here are some uh, pictures of flooding. This is the uh, Mississippi River flooding in 1993. Okay, so you obviously have this picture of the floods. Okay, so we've got water basically where it should not be. That's flooding. The, it, it has just rained in 1993. It rained and it rained and it rained. Uh, the ground was completely full of water. Um, the water had to go someplace. So if, if the bank, the rivers and the streams become too full, then they start to overflow their banks and you have flooding. Here is a space view. This is the Mississippi River from space here. Okay, that's what it should look like normally. And then here, down here, you have a picture of the Mississippi River in a time of flooding in 1993. And you can see how much area, and that's hundreds of square miles, is over flooded with water. Okay. All right, so other places we get water out of the ground are these areas called aquifers. Okay, aquifers. Uh, some people like to pronounce it aquifer, okay? Uh, I've always learned it as aquifer, okay? Aquifer. Now, an aquifer is an area uh, that is underground, still talking about groundwater, okay? Um, that is a space or area of water that is usually between layers of rock. It's like a trapped pocket of water, okay? It's not necessarily a wide open cave. Um, but it's an area that is much more open than just your normal soil and ground particles are. And, but it's a large underground pocket of water, if you will. Um, a lot of towns will drill down to this pocket of water and pump the water out of these aquifers. Okay? Um, we here in Allen get our water from Lake Levon. Lake Levon is a man-made lake. They usually call it a reservoir. It's man-made for its, the purpose of collecting water. So we take that water out of Lake Levon and it goes to a place where it's cleaned up and then it goes up to the big water towers and then it goes to your house. Okay, So that's where we get our water. Um, now, lots of towns example out in west texas there are not any lakes out there so they don't have those reservoirs they don't have those bodies of water to pull water out of so a lot of those towns um, are around these aquifers and they drill down to these aquifers and pull the water out of these aquifers okay so here's an illustration of an aquifer and i was talking about how we had water okay that is trapped so here i've got okay layers of rock and I've got water that is trapped between these layers of rock. And as you can see, if we take and we drill down into one of these layers of rock, or excuse me, one of these layer, these pockets of water, then we can pull that water up out of the ground. So it's a great source uh, of water for us. Now there are some issues with this and getting water this way, because a lot of times uh, uh, we have water when we take too much water out of there. Okay, it be, takes this empty pocket, we, we drain this, this pocket of water out and it becomes an empty space. So a lot of times this can cause problems with the ground sinking because there's nothing essentially holding the ground up because all the water is gone. Okay, called subsidence, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so going back to a, a well as opposed to an aquifer, okay? So a well, oops. A well is simply a hole. A well is a hole that is dug into, dug into the ground, down into the water table, okay, and uh, water is pumped out. Uh, we use this water for either um, our own water supply, okay, drinking water and water to clean and, and everything else, or also irrigation, water to, to, to give to plants, okay. Um, when you dig a well, you dig it way down into the water table because remember that water table might rise, okay, or fall. So we dig a well deep down so the well doesn't ever run dry. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go back to a couple of slides and we'll come back to this slide here in just a second. Let's go back to this slide with the picture. Okay, so here is an example of a well. All right, so you can see down here we have our zone of saturation. So this is where the rain, it's rained, water percolates down into the ground. Okay, this is the area that is saturated with water. And we dig a well down into that water table. Okay, 
um, and we just put a big pipe down there. Now, we don't necessarily have the old school wells like this one is anymore. That's a well from a long time ago with the old bucket. But we still do have wells, okay, that are pretty much the same, the same principle. Uh, if you don't live inside the city limits of City of Allen where you're not getting the water from the city water system and you live outside, a lot of people that live out in Fairview, for example, um, they get their water okay, from a well. They're not on a, a water system. So you drill a hole down into the ground. They put a pipe down in there. You don't necessarily have a, a hand crank bucket, but there's an electric pump that pumps the water up from the ground. Uh, when I was growing up, I lived outside the city limits. City limits. We had a well. There's a giant truck that came out and had a giant drill bit drilled down to the ground, way down two, three hundred feet down, way down to the ground. Okay, put a pipe down into that hole to kind of line that hole, and then you had a uh, a pump. Okay, another pipe that goes down inside that pipe and pumps the water up, an electric pump. Okay, to get that water. Of course, that water went through a home purification system, just like you would in a city pur purification system. Uh, but even usually, that water is even much cleaner than you would find out of, you know, for example, Lake Levon. We'll talk about that as well. All right. So going back, okay. So we're talking about our well. We'll take another picture of uh, wells here. Okay. So here is two examples of when you might find uh, a wet uh, time, lots of rain, and um, the, the water table very high, okay, versus the water table being very low. So here we have the water table being very high. It's been raining a lot. A lot of this area of ground is saturated with water. You can see that we have our wells here. They're dug down into the water table, okay, so we can draw water up out of the ground, okay. Now, in areas, uh, times of what has been real dry, you can see that the water table has fallen. It's much lower. There's not near as much ground that is saturated. It hadn't rained for a while, so trees and plants are absorbing that water. People are using that water uh, and so forth. And you can see this particular lower well still down into the water table and is able to get water, but this upper well here okay, is not quite reaching down into the water table, so they call that a dry well. Okay, it was not dug deep enough. Therefore, usually whenever they drill a well, they drill it very deep to make sure it always stays down below that water table. Doesn't matter if it's dry season or wet season, there's plenty of water to pull out of the ground. But you can see this is a good illustration showing you that area saturated. Now remember, this is not an empty pocket of water. This is like a sponge. It's soil that's soaked with water. Okay, so it's not just a big empty area. It's soil and rock that is just all the area between those particles is soaked with water. All right, so that ends groundwater, and we'll come back in the next video and we'll talk about surface water.